Yo, this is MC Loki. You're watching the Drum and Bass Diaries. Peace. inspiration can slash should slash will come from anywhere there's nowhere that I would specifically go to and there's nowhere that I specifically avoid it literally might be a thing of me just you know walking down the road and seeing a word on a, on a billboard and then trying to come up with words that rhyme with that or you know just overhearing a little snippet of a conversation as somebody walks past me and it's like hmm and then off, off I'll go on some, some little tangent. I think a lot of time if producers are forcing things out, it just doesn't sound as good as what it could, you know? Because I've always found tracks I've forced are rubbish. <laughs> where tracks where I've sat there and just gone with the flow, they've just flowed and that's the product at the end of it. But producers, yeah, I'd say, even down to DJs, just be yourself and don't care what anyone else is playing or making, yeah. just do what you think is right for you. Just, just keep it different, it's all about being different to the others, so that's my advice anyway. I think in, inspiration for a track can start from anything from just a sound, a bass line, a drum break, but then anything to even more like more abstract, say like a dream. Uh, James wrote, started Severance after a dream of being chased through a warehouse, I think, uh, on the run, so yeah, hence the massive paranoid vibe on that. Um, but yeah, it can come from anything really. When I was a kid, I was like a massive fan of Full Cycle, Represent, Ronnie Size, Cross Die, Sub, Dynamite MC, you know, and I was lucky enough to get to work with Dynamite and do some remixes and go and play at the nights and stuff like that. And those people still inspire me to this day. Earlier today, I was listening to a Ronnie Size set from 95, the Jungle Quake thing. And you know, those artists are like pioneers to me, and, and you know, and the Metalhead Stable and people like that, they. They inspire me every day from those original records. Those original records that I love, still, I love them as much today and they're still as exciting to me as the first time I heard them. And, you know, that does, you know, I'm emulating what they did, not the music. I'm not trying to, like, copy the music. I want to be original because they were original, but what I want to do is, like, build on the foundations and build my own sound in the way that they did. That impressed me, you know, like, that made a big impression, the way they redefined a the genre by themselves as just an artist and they became a movement all by themselves and that you know that that's the power of it, being a, a strong artist I mean you can you can totally affect the culture you're part of. Inspiration is a very very hard thing to uh, define because it doesn't really come in any one shape or form. Um, it could be when I'm traveling, it could be when I'm asleep, it could be when I'm you know partying, um, it could be something I read in the news, um, it just might come out of, out of nowhere. Um, the thing with the inspiration for me is that if if it comes, you just got to kind of catch it and hold on to it and go right and just start writing and writing and writing. Um, other times you can sit there and force yourself to write for days and there's nothing really there. You might actually write something, but there's nothing any good there. So, yeah, inspiration is um, a beautiful thing and um, when she appears, give her a big kiss and hold tight. <laughs> for me, it's, um, I wouldn't exactly call myself a producer as yet. I'm still learning. That's why you see a lot of the time I'm either clapping with Calm or Diamond Eye, I'm learning off these guys. But the inspiration, I normally dig for the samples and stuff. And then we've got an idea to build around um, the sample. It could be a vocal, it could be a sound, it could be a break. 
yeah, the inspiration normally comes from, for me personally, the sample. When I go to start a track, it'll either be like a rhythm based sort of idea where I'll get, I'll have a wicked break beat. Sometimes it'll just be a bass line, or quite often it'll be a, a good sample that kind of just gives me the vibe and, and you know, and then work from there, bring in beats. So it, you know, there is no real kind of starting point apart from switching on the, the studio and getting everything up and running. Technologies help massively, um, both in a creative aspect, but then also communication. Like without the internet, I don't think we'd have met half the amount of people we have. Um, I don't think we'd have been in touch with any of the record labels that we've been in touch with. Then also getting gigs with promoters without the internet, then we just wouldn't have met half the people we would have met otherwise. I think. But then also in terms of creativity, like you've got. Anybody can make music now on their laptop, you've got synthesizers, anyone can do it from their home now. And I think, again, without that, I don't think we'd be making the tunes that we're making now without that. Yeah, I suppose it's helped it to go global, i.e. the internet, you know what I mean? But the other thing it's done is to make drum and bass, unfortunately, a little bit throwaway sometimes, which I don't find attractive about it and that's why me as a DJ I will hang on if I say if I love something and I don't want it out of my set for a while I will hang on to it for a bit you know even if it's come out you know I think back in the day you were able to gauge all these things because of the dub plate re revolution you were given something by an artist and they were like well you can have that for two months and you knew that after the two months when the vinyl came through the door you play for a little bit while and then you'd move on to something else. Now with the CD revolution and that you're getting music from all over the world in massive amounts, sometimes it becomes a little bit throwaway but I suppose as well technology for producers, I'm not a producer but I think things obviously sounded more organic back in the day due to the fact that you were making things in an analogue form and also that you were playing vinyl. There's never going to be Whatever format it is, there will never be that replication of that diamond on the end of that needle sitting in that groove. It's, it's beautiful, you know, and I think it's taken a while for producers to work out how to make that sound through a digital format, you know, and sometimes I think the digital format's a little bit harsh, you know, and doesn't always give that soul, but I think as time has gone on, each producer has found a way to do that, and I mean, it's great to a certain extent because, you know, that was our decision, Chemistry and I. Do we make music or do we DJ it? And when we, we made one track at Reinforce, they gave us three days to make a track. It's on, on, it's on Enforcers 6 and 7 on the picture disc it's called Signature. And um, we made this track with Digo. And we realised at that point there, wow, you need money to get a sampler, keyboards, this. So I suppose in that respect, it has made it a lot easier to be able to make it because you can now make it on your laptop. But still the strength of a good producer is how fantastic they can make that technology sound. You know what I mean? Because there, is, there are times when a lot of things are sounding similar and you'll have to pick the best one out of the five that you got that sound the same, do you know what I mean? And that's a bit sad for those other producers, but then they can, they've got to then almost find a different style and find their way. And I think that comes eventually with time and, and experience, I would have thought. <laughs>